Hi, this is um, the same day as I'm doing the lamp video and I'm doing some sugar creamers for an order at the moment. Um, so I thought I'd start up another video, how long it will take to finish, I don't know. Uh, but um, it's been a beach day. It's warm today and in Fahrenheit about 85 degrees uh, and uh, humid too with all that fog this morning if you saw the lamp video. Um, but um, it's really pretty out now. I mean, the fog's gone. That's what it looks like today now. But um, very pretty today. So we never know what we're going to get each day, but, um, but it is a very pretty day. So I'm going to do some little sugar creamers. Let's get you down to see. Um, and it's a, a little experiment. Um, I've just made a sugar jar and a lid and they don't fit because I was guessing at the size of the lid. I made the sugar jar and used half the weight of the clay for the sugar jar for the lid and it just comes out a bit small. So I'm going to now make a lid and a jar for these two. So, um, so this is the same ball of clay I made the jar out of and this is about uh, I would guess this is about 230 grams of clay, it's uh, less than a pound. Um, Alright, so centering. This clay is uh, number 516 from Pottery Supply House in Toronto. Or Ontario, I don't think it's actually in Toronto, it's a suburb of Toronto. So center up your clay. It's a small piece of clay, basically. So we're going to treat this the same, but I'm going to try and make it less wide to fit the other lid. And that's going to happen to you when you start to take orders if you're a beginner, since you don't you don't know what size clay you need to make a certain size piece. So you just have to do it by trial and error, and after a while you might be able to get the hang of it and guess it very accurately. But I just guessed wrong. But I knew I could do it this way anyway, and just make another two jars, another jar and another lid to match the others. Okay, so we're just not gonna go as far open. I'm gonna put my bottom in there, do the same as I did with the other one. We just put this in at the bottom and then make the belly come out just by holding the rib in place and pushing my finger to the belly, to the rib, to give that kind of shape. And if you hold the rib like this, you can kind of define that corner a little bit there. And now let's see what we've got. This has got to be smaller, which is there. And then this lid, can you see it? Just see it. So the inner wall of that lid, of that lip, lip that rim kind of thing, basically, the flange that overhangs, um, has, has got to be smaller than this, and it is. So that piece will now fit that. Um, so that was good. So now I know if I want to do it this size, which is fine as a little sugar jar. Basically, I can use half the weight of clay to the actual jar weight. Because that, that just makes it simpler for measuring and getting your clay balls ready. make a lid for that piece and last time I cut the ball of clay in half and this is the other half so it's not big enough so this time I'm gonna cut it a quarter off and this should be the size now and this is how I make a lid for this type of sugar jar it's the simplest lid I think that you can make for a piece of pottery. 
And I don't see the point in complicating life if you don't have to. There's two people in the showroom I can see now, so... Because I'm setting my studio up, you know, basically to keep my costs down to the minimum, I like to be able to work while I'm waiting for customers. And this system, having a little camera in there, because it's a separate building, as you see from my video, works really well. And if I was a really thriving business, you could just say, well, just hire somebody that's sitting there. Well, when, I, when I've been over there, sometimes three, four hours have gone by between customers. Because we're not, this isn't the mall here. And I like to keep thing every, keep my life simple. So let's see how big we're going to get this. I've got, I know it's got to be bigger than I think, so I just pushed it out a little bit there. And let's measure it again. So that's the width, and that is basically got to be a touch bigger. It's even more than I was thinking. All I did was push the rim out a little bit more. There we go. So now I get it off. So that's, I was just, you know, basically playing to try and estimate how much clay I need to make my lid if I make the jaw. So to get a lid this big, just isn't going to be as convenient as having the, the jar a little smaller. That was the crows outside my window. They're trying to get in on the action. All right, so we have the smaller jar and lid there, and we have the bigger jar and lid there. So now we know our weights of clay. So let's do this to get it again, see if we can do it properly this time. Centering the clay. If you're a beginner and you want to watch a beginner video, I have a really good video on how to center for beginners. Um, you have to look back in my history a little bit, but there's a really nice video there. The ultimate beginner's video, I think I called it. Alright, so let's get the jar open. Leave a nice, decent thickness in the bottom for if you want to trim or not, but um, I still like to trim. It just refines the form a little bit. Remembering I don't want to wipe it too wide, so I'm taking it up narrower than I think. Go in, pull the belly out, but don't pull the rim out, so I'm trying to avoid touching the rim here. Alright, so let's put my little foot in. Okay, so let's just use my rib to get that a little bit more refined there. Get the water off this. I think it's going to be close to that second one that I did. And this way I can just cut the... I, li I don't like that. Uh, I like that edge to be a little bit more defined there. Now, second jaw was this one. I think it might be, it has to be a little bit wider is my guess. Yeah, we're just a bit. So now, uh, after I've done a few of these, I'll get, my eye will be trained and I'll be able to get these accurate without even measuring. So 
makes it more even. And now I'm going to refine that belly a little bit because it was hanging out a bit too much there. Let's see what we have now. Okay, we're perfect now. So I know that I can get a lid from half the ball of clay. This clay is so smooth to throw. It's very close to a porcelain, but it is a stoneware white clay body. Always wet the board where you're gonna place it, and then you can just slide it off your hand without dropping it. So you can really flatten it down quite a bit because you know the whole thing is going to be pretty flat really. And then I've got the knob in the center so press down and push in with your fingers and there's your knob instantly. And then you pull this part out making sure it doesn't get dry. Compress the bottom a little bit, and then use your little finger and just push it in and push the clay over the top of your little finger, and push your little finger up a bit, and it makes that rim a little deeper. I'm trying to make it so these, if I don't have to measure, I'll be able to do it by eye, and I'll get it right each time, but it takes a few at the beginning to sort of figure out the weight of clay and what you can get from it. All right, what do we have? I got the inside of this. Oh, now we've got a bunch of customers in the gallery. And this lid is the inner bit of the flange will be inside the hole and it's wide enough so it sticks over the top of the wall and go out. So that's perfect. Give it a little spiral on the top. A nice little decorative element there. And then dribble water all the way around, get your wire, and slowly while it's spinning, just keep the wire tight, it'll fall right off. And then because there's plenty of water there, you can slide it onto your fingers, and there it goes on there. All right, so now we, we should be on a roll. Put a hole in it, leave a nice thick base, pull out, not too far because I like the bases to these to be a, you know, fairly narrow. I don't want to make them unstable, but I do like them to have a little elegance in the form. And then you're coming up again, not making it too wide. tool, give yourself a foot, using the other side of the tool I dig it in just about a tiny bit higher up and it gives me that foot shape that you may have seen me do in other videos. And here's the ball, give myself a little defined edge. And let's see whether we made it too wide or too small. I think it's if anything, it'll be a bit too wide, but we'll see. 
I'm just going to do this one by eye. Remember, I'm trying to train my eye to do this. I still like to have that defined edge underneath that little thing there, because it'll catch the glaze a little bit. Let's see what we have. So there's the original. It fits perfectly. Here's this new one, and it's a tiny bit big, but it's so tiny bit big that all I have to do is that, and it will now be fine. Perfect. So my eye is getting better. Everything's pulled through. You just have to let it turn slowly and make sure you've got water all the way around the foot. And then it will slide off. And I put the two jars together and the lids together so I know which one is supposed to fit which other one. Now, let's see if I can, that one felt like a bit bigger anyway. Here's the block of clay. I think I'm, because I didn't measure the clay at the beginning, so they didn't weigh it. I cut it, cut it out without weighing it. See, I rely on my eye all the time, but now this should be the lid. in the center and that knob can be big or small but remember that sometimes people buy your work in fact most of the customers I have are people who are older who've got disposable income so a lot of them will have arthritis as they get older so you want to make sure you don't make these things too small to pick up for people who have arthritis in their hands Unfortunately, I don't have all the pictures in my hands, but here you go, finger underneath, finger across my little finger, pushing out, and then I lift my little finger up, and I've got that deeper rim. Get the water off so we can see what we have. And here the baby seagull. Here you've got crows, baby seagulls. I haven't heard any pigeons out there. They don't make any noise, except for that cooey noise, but that's a more relaxing noise. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, see, I've got it. It only took a couple. The first one wasn't right, but now I've got it without measuring. And you see, when you're doing production pottery, um, you're trying to keep your prices low so people will buy them. I'm gonna define that rim a little bit there. It's, pricing is a very different, <laughs> I suppose we could do a video on that, but it, most people would go to sleep, I think. But. All right, pull tight, water all the way around, it slides, oh, it didn't slide off. There you go, you just push it then. Usually they just slide off. And then you lay it down. So there we go, we've got our sugar ball, and now I've got to make the creamers to match. Because this is a sugared creamer set. Now, a creamer, should it be the same size height-wise as a sugar jar? And that doesn't make sense to me. I don't see why one has to be short and squat just because the sugar jar is short and squat. But I have had customers ask me to make them tall or short. Sometimes it's very important to somebody that the two are the same height. And I don't think that should be the case. But, but you have to understand, I guess, that some people, it's important to them. Okay, so wait, here's go, push down, open up, it's just a mug, remember it's just a mug, but I always feel like the, the form of a creamer should be a little bit nicer, or a, sugar, or a, a milk pitcher, whichever, but making pitchers and jugs is a real classic thing for potters, so I always feel like for some reason I have to try harder. 
if it's a pitcher or a, or a jug. And I like mine to be wider at the bottom and much narrower at the top. Compress the rim with your finger. Now it's obviously going to widen a little bit, but I'm going to try bellying at the bottom there. And then let go and let it come back in. And I'm going to compress that rim to make it much short, much narrower. And this is a little rounded belly creamer. I'm trying to keep the height down a little lower. I'll show another one in a minute where it's much wider much taller rather. So I'm bending the rib like this to give that curve, follow that curve. I'm just trying to drag the water off. Out. Let's just find my sponge on the stick here. So this is one creamer. So I think I'll make three. Oh, I have a customer, so we've got to go back over to the gallery. I'll be right back with you. Let's pull a little tiny lip on it, and the way I do that, I usually wait for a while, but I use my fingers and I wet. Oh, you should be, can't really see, can you? I do it with my left hand. Oh no, I hate using my left hand. So I've just sharpened the edge a little bit. I can turn it this way, maybe a bit better. And then I put two fingers either side of the spout and roll my finger backwards and forwards over the spout. being careful not to split the spout. If you're using groggy clay, it's very easy to split the spout. And there you've got your little pitcher. And a lot of times you can fiddle with it and just kind of make it a little bit more angular by pushing the lip either way, but that's a, that's a little creamer. So getting it off is easy. You put some water all the way around. While it's still moving around slowly, you let the wire pull through, and it should just pull right off towards you, stop the wheel, pull the wire all the way through, and then, like I said, it's a good idea to wet the bat that you're going to put it on, so it doesn't disfigure, you just slide it on the bat. So I need four of these, and I am going to make all four different so that I've got one to match each sugar jar. There we go. And the customers I just went and helped ordered a four-person dinner set, so I'll have to throw that later on after this. Okay, getting it nice and centered. Let go slowly, hole in the center, not too far down, pull out, compress your base with your middle finger pressing down. That's why I've got a flat middle finger because I've done that a million times over the last 40 odd years. And then slow the wheel down a touch, pull up. And go, make the first pull fairly fast so you stay ahead of that water. But it dries below your fingers, so you've got to stay ahead of that dry bit. And follow the water. Same again. Push with your middle fingers, inside and outside, and it makes the clay squish a bit above your fingers each time. But you have to follow the wet bit that's just above your fingers, because once you rotate once, it's going to be dry. So you've got to go above that. Okay, so then that's when your ribs come in handy again. Foot, push in the sharp point of the rib. Other end of the rib gives me that kind of defined edge. And then 
fingers in, but don't let it stretch too much, and belly, but not going to belly as much with this one. And then I'm pulling in with my thumb at the top. So I've got more of a slight belly on this one. And then I'm going to collar in just a touch, get the water out. Let's see what we have. So got a slight belly, push the end of the rib in deep. And lift it up and take it back into the clay give you that nice angular top there must be a name for that type of top it's been done so many times by people but it's like a double lip i always call it there you go so that's another shape of creamer not quite the belly and once again i'll try and do it this side for you so you can see can you see just I'm flattening the clay between my fingers just in that one place right where the where I want the spout to be. Fingers either side, roll your finger back and forwards, take a look to make sure you're doing it evenly. Your thumb will make a different shape than a finger going down with a thumb going at an angle. So there's always that little discrepancy, so I always feel like I have to go back in and tighten up to make it more even, but it's barely ne noticeable. And then when these are dry, I will probably go in and change that just a tiny little bit. Anyway, this is how you get it off. Roll the water around, pick up your wire, pull it through while it's rotating slowly. Ooh, I caught myself in the pinhole there. And then push it onto your fingers. You can disfigure it by lifting it harshly, um, but why? I mean, it'll spring back to shape for sure, but if you can take it off level without disfiguring the clay, why would you do it the other way? Anyway, here we go. So let's get another picture. Going for tall and narrow. So hole in the center, go down, don't go too far. So I'm gonna get, I want it to have a fairly stable base, but I want tall and narrow this time. So fingers on the outside press hard, and on the inside you're pressing back just enough so you can see the clay stretches above your fingers, but it gets very narrow. So I don't take it up too, because I can still touch, the, with my middle finger, I can still touch the bottom. But now I'm doing the final pull to get a tall, narrow little creamer. Here you go. Put the base in, put the foot in. Get your fingers in there as much as you can. And this time, remember, I'm trying to keep it narrow, so I'm just going to grab the water off there. And then I'm going to go back before I take all the water off and collar it. So I want it tall and narrow. I don't know what the lady who wants to order these is going to need. I'm still going to do the double lip. And that's the way you do it, just by doing that. And basically that's it. This is a tall, narrow creamer. 
got to get the water out too. Alright, so that's the bottom. Same again, thin the rim. So it's basically just got that sharp edge that will cut the liquid off and hopefully it doesn't dribble. And do the roll with your finger backwards and forwards. And then you can, let's see if I can get this so you can see it. I can define the edge of the curve by putting my finger there and rolling that towards my finger each time. Try to get it as even as you can. A paintbrush is better to do these with than a sponge actually so. Okay so that's my tall um, little creamer. Just make sure it's really good and symmetrical. I think you can see there that it looks pretty good. And, um, same again, water all the way around the piece, spinning slowly, pull the wire tight and just slides right off. So I found that the water, when you're sliding pieces off like that, if it's fresh water, it's, it doesn't come off. But if it's actually slightly thick slip water, you can see what we've been doing. Short, fat, middle, tall. So what do we do for the next one? We'll just do something in between, I guess. That's the three basic pictures there, I guess, so. Fingers in. I'm gonna leave a thick base, so I can make it slightly shorter one, I think. I think I like the idea of the short one, but with a narrower top. So we've got a very wide base, and we've got a short stubby one, but we don't have a short stubby one with a very narrow top. So let's see if we can do that. So now, put the bottom in. So it's basically got a bottom without even trimming, but I'll probably trim them anyway. So now I'm going to get my fingers in and I'm going to give myself the wide belly. Now let's do my fingers like that and get it back narrow. So we're going to have this really nice rounded belly with a really narrow top. And everybody who wants to wash this is up is going to say, who the heck made this with such a narrow, you can't get your hands in here. There we go, so we've got one. And we'll see whether, oh good, I don't need to trim the top off because it went back into, I thought it was going to be a bit off then, but it wasn't. Define that edge. Define the edge right here again. And then get your water out the inside. If you keep it rotating, even though the spin sponge is way too big, it just slots right in there and it doesn't disfigure it. Coming up, same thing again, doesn't disfigure it. And if you want, just roll that over the top like that. If this was groggy clay, I wouldn't do that, but this clay is like porcelain. And there's my fourth type of pitcher. There you go. Practice makes perfect. Water all the way around. And it should release, which it did. 
So I think out of all the pots I just did, only one of them didn't come completely loose. And there's a nice little picture shape. I'm just about to put the handles on uh, those uh, creamers I threw yesterday, but it's so pretty out. I just thought I'd give you a quick look. It's August the 15th. I'm doing multiple videos, so I'm kind of jumping around a bit. But, um, but anyway, it's a beautiful day today in the neighborhood. Whoops, there we go. Very pretty. I threw the pictures yesterday, and I'm going to put the handles on right now. Um, and I pulled the handles yesterday, but I kept them wrapped up overnight. Um, so I've got everything right here. There's my little strap handles. I've done videos on pulling handles in the past. Um, but I thought I'd give you a quick reminder. Because I am actually making this sugar creamer set, so... So when I put handles on, I want to be able to move the pot easily. And that is a little bit stiffer than I normally would use, so I'm just going to brush a little bit of slip water to make slip over that area. Because I actually like to be able to touch the clay and get a little bit off on my hand when I join handles. That way I don't have to do any scratching and scoring. But, um, You know, Donald Duck out there is making a noise. There we go. So my strap handles, I simply push down the when I snapped it off the big ball of clay is always a little thin. So I pat it down, finger and thumb like that. So you're in a nice bed. And this is now got some slip on the surface. So you've got to make sure that you get it opposite the spout. It seems silly to say that, but uh, I often make the mistake because one eye is a bit stronger than the other I think and I always get it slightly to the right that looks good so I'm simply moving my fingers inside and outside pushing the clay between them together and that's enough to join and then I bend it let it fall with gravity so that you've got a nice straight and then when I look I should yep it's perfect so basically I rub the same at the bottom the clay is always a bit softer at the bottom anyway, so... And then I put my finger in and just pull off a piece that just opposite my finger, and then I can curve that over, and I have a nice lump of clay that I can push down. And I also, for added security, push a little bit of clay right in that little gap, right there so that it actually has a little extra clay to bend in there. So I'm going to do that all the way around. And before I change any tools, if I do the same here, I might have to wet my thumb if it's not sliding easily, but it's still sliding. It has to grip the clay just to touch. And then you do that one, wet your thumb, and it's like you're being efficient at this point about putting handles on. I don't have to handle the pieces, so there's no risk of... Because I'm joining handles when the clay is very soft. That way I save on the scratching and scoring. And this one wants you to move over to the left a bit there. Same again. Pulling the clay over. And then you can push it in at the bottom a little bit. And then I use the back end of the brush to push that little wedge shape in like that. And I prefer to do the back end of the brush to put that in at the top too. But I will often use the, the little um, ferrule of the brush to actually smudge this in too. But this back end of the brush works really nice. Same again down here. Push that little wedge in making sure you don't get water dripping between the wedge and the thing, and then up there, doing the smudgy bit. Same again down here, 
Now, I'm not picking tools up and putting them down. So it becomes quite efficient to do it this way because I'm really, you know, doing the same process multiple times so I don't have to think about tools where, the, where I put them and stuff like that. So if you've got about 24 mugs to do, it makes sense. If you have one mug to do, obviously it's not like this. So I'm shaking, dip it in water, then shake the excess off and then do the smudging. So it's just a little bit tacky. Now everybody has different ways of putting handles on and they all work. So you can simply choose what you want to do. Now I'm using my favorite brush for doing this because it's stiff bristles that spring back to shape. And I simply go around and clean up on all four handles, making sure that you've got a good, nice handle that looks like it's growing out of the pot. And your joint areas are substantial, so hopefully if somebody does break a handle, it's not where the joint is. So you can actually say, I did my job properly because the handle didn't break where I joined it. Good idea to put your fingers behind when you're doing this in case you push a bit too much pressure on. I always kind of pull up with the hand with the brush like that at this point. And the same with the last one. Now you could join your handle with a thick part of the handle at the bottom too. I mean, there's nothing to stop you playing around and doing different handle styles. There you go. And then using all the little bits of clay you've got left over, it makes it a little bit stronger. I use a button on the top there. Um, And I need a bit more here, here. This one. This one, I, I'm not... It's not too bad, but I'm going to readjust that handle a little bit. I don't think it's quite the way I want it. There you go. It needs to be down a bit, that's all. And then you get ups with their initials on them, but I have a little spiral that I use on all my handles that I put there, so that kind of identifies my pot. I don't know if any other potters in the country do this, but I encourage everybody, if they want to do this, to find a little shape that they like, a, a geometric or initials or a leaf or anything you want to do and just come up with a little stamp if you can do that so we don't mix our pots up. My name's always on the bottom of mine as well. Okay, if you had to adjust at this point, you don't in this case, but you can move your spout by doing the fingers like that to narrow the spout. You could even push the spout open a little bit more there. And that's why I'm saying you can adjust to make sure your spout is opposite the handle and all that. It's not the end of the world if your handle was a little bit off. And then really go around and kind of clean up your spout a little bit. It, it, to make a spout that doesn't drip, it should be quite thin, but that also makes it vulnerable for damage. So you've got a bit of balance there, I guess. And it should hang down just a touch. If you can get that, that really kind of helps with it not dripping. This one is still, I feel like, has to be pushed over like that to make it opposite. That looks a bit better. Okay, that's putting the handles on your creamers for the creamer, creamer and sugar. So we've got four different creamers here. All right, next step. Okay, so you put your bowl upside down onto the actual wheel. Seal it up, this is the gipping grip uh, device. And then you can skim over with a trimming tool. And this is a R2 by Kemper. And that will actually take some stuff off. 
you can also use these metal ribs that I've shown you before. And let's see if we can get so you can see it. This will skim off. I'll do this. This skims off a very smooth. If you don't want to leave any grooves from the trimming tool, you can use one of these devices, which I just wore out over the years, and it will trim just like a trimming tool. But it's got a very sharp edge which you will get sharper and sharper with use as well. And it, but it literally leaves a grooveless surface if you want to get rid of any of those grooves that the trimming tool would normally leave, all right? And it even digs deep, but it's a little hard to show you. I guess it's, you can turn around a bit. You can actually make it make a groove by using the edge of it and then digging in with the edge kind of awkward trimming like this but because as I said I like to show that edge of the foot on the inside as well all right so that's that area if you want to leave a groove at the bottom you see this? I'm just going to put the point in to define a little edge right down the, about two thirds of the way, to, well, half to two thirds of the way down. I've got an edge there, and that way I can feel it when I use the actual Kemper tool to do these grooves. And you're turning the wheel and carving in one movement. So this will take some practice to get used to doing this, but it means that your groove marks are actually all identical. And then I always redefine the foot and redefine in case I went down over the edge. To actually get those marks in, which will pick the glaze up when you fire it. You can see it all the way around. All my pieces have this, pretty much all of them. I will, it's another signature thing that I do for my work. And then I don't need that cushion anymore. So just put the piece in there. And the lid was rough on the bottom, obviously. And all I did was place it on top of my pot. It's a bit off there, so I just have to knock it over a touch. There you go. And then I just trimmed away the rough. I throw my lid so I barely have to trim anything anyway. And you're just trimming that little section there. And I can feel that it's the right size because of the way it sits on top of the actual rim of the pot. And then I just check it to make sure you've got about an eighth of an inch movement to a quarter at the most. And that way, you know, the glaze thickness won't make it too tight. And you can fire these on the pots or you can fire them separately. But that's the trimming for those. And then the actual pitchers. <laughs> my, my cat is looking at the seagulls outside. There's a baby seagull, I'm sure you can hear it. It's driving my cat nuts. And it, she goes on squawking at the actual mother seagull. Um, and she sits right next to her, the mother seagull, who just sits on my deck all the time. Now she has a baby. So, um, and makes that noise. And the mother just gets fed up, I think. and flies away after a while. I guess at some point they, they wean them. But it must be, my, my cat is being driven nuts by it too. She's a little distance away at the moment, but when it's right outside my door, it's really loud. And in the summer I like to keep the door open, of course. But even then, sometimes I'll close the door. Okay, so that was the basic trimming. You saw it go in there. I'm going to flute these afterwards as well. So let's see how I do it again. The rim of these, I probably should have protected that one, actually. Because the rim of these can get chipped if you're not careful. The cushion is just yoga mat. I use it for all my big bats for trimming platters and plates as well. Uh, so you've got it gripped, and then I do the, I already pre, kind of 
form that base with that wooden tool when I'm throwing, but I just emphasize it. Ah. <laughs> this is like nature show here, actually. Let me just show you this. I'm not sure if you can see the raccoon just came out at my door there. All right, so trimming, you're basically just taking the skim surface off. So you can use a trimming tool like that. I've shown this before on my videos. These are my old metal ribs that have been worn out. You can actually use those for trimming. They will take a little surface off too. This one's a bit sticky to do, I think. But you can see it grabs some of the clay. Usually it flies right off, but this is a little soft for this to actually work. It's better when the piece is totally leather hard or just past leather hard, but it will take off a lump of clay. So you can use these, which leave texture of the spiral that some people really like anyway. Or you can use the flat metal thing, which you know, smooths it out totally. But I'm gonna get this down a little bit lower in the center there. And I like to leave like a little corner, which is why I tell you to leave a quarter inch, less than a centimeter in the bottom of your pieces so that um, and do a defined foot. It looks nice if the foot looks finished. Some uh, customers prefer the bottom to be unglazed and most of my customers prefer the piece to be glazed on the bottom, which is why I fire, I fire on stilts, which is, makes it more expensive, but the stilts last five to 10 firings. There we go. Yeah, we threw four different shape pitches. Gripped, put your fingers in the top on the bottom just to hold it down even with the gipping grip I like to do that and then just basically finish forming that shape that you already put on there when you were throwing and then basically if you want to you can use a pebble to actually smooth off the bottom if you're going to leave the piece unglazed on the bottom, then I, I would recommend using a pebble to burnish the bottom of your pot, because that makes it glass-like with the clay anyway. All right, and that's the piece. That's all the pictures.